unlock my fretboard, guitar god, wizard, orangutan, what pros do that you don't in five minutes or under three minutes or less, and you will have a bazillion babes just crawling after you, tearing your clothes off like you were Paul McCartney and John Lennon thrown into a blender, mixed up and spat out into one super beetle. There we go. Three minutes. Watch that one. All note wings. Minutes. Memorize a guitar for more than five minutes. This really works. So it sure does. Uh, okay. This unusual sentence helped me find guitar notes instantly. And I like that it's not misleading. It's not total bullcrap. Like, oh, three minutes. You'll have every note. You'll know it in three minutes. Oh, you'll, you'll memorize a fretboard in five minutes. Bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. Um, <laughs> No, Ricky Kaminsky, th this is the best video I've seen when it comes to learning the notes on the fretboard and having some kind of uh, procedure or a, uh, no, that's not the word I'm looking for, having a system, having a system. And Ricky Kaminsky, you're the man. You made the, the best uh, fretboard notes video on YouTube until now until this one here, the one I'm making. But I'm giving you props, just so you don't have to hate me when, when my video takes over with my, like, I don't know, I'll probably get like 200 views because I'm just like the man like that. But the wealth of knowledge I'm gonna have is gonna be ridiculous, Ricky Kaminsky. And you're gonna miss out because you you don't know me because I'm an unknown because I got like zero subscribers. And I'm telling you right now. Hey, do me a favor, don't subscribe because you're not cool enough. So whatever you do, don't hit that subscribe button. Don't hit that notification bell because you don't want to be notified for my next awesome video that you're just going to miss out on because it will unlock the freaking wizard class super guitar god inside your body that's just like living there, just harnessing the, the strength of, of your lethargy, of your complacency, of, of your lost potential. So please, please do not subscribe. Seriously. No. Un unclick that. No. Unclick it. No. You, you, hell no. You're not cool enough. Back to Ricky. Yeah, man. You're the man. But sorry, my video's going to be better than yours. Right now you're saying to yourself, why the hell should I listen to this guy? He looks just like every other YouTube guitarist with their pompadour hair or whatever hair you want to call it trying to be cool from the 50s or be Paul Davids. Let me tell you something here. My hair is pure gel on this hair. See this? See this? Look at this. Huh? Huh? Did Paul Davids do that? Huh? Huh? Yeah. I don't need to fake my funk. But F, F note, remember the F note, F and B. Wherever you see an F, there's going to be a B right there. It's not on the G's, B string, so if it's an F up here, the B is going to be there. Remember that. Okay, fine. Then I, then I, I won't be. How about this? Is this good? Is this a nice little part for you? Huh? Huh? Welcome to guitar class with Mr. Handy. Uh, learn to memorize the notes on the guitar fretboard. Easier way to memorize fretboard. All seven notes, one shape. What the hell are they showing there? All seven notes, one shape. All seven notes, one shape. Is that Tetris? Are you playing Tetris on there? Get the hell out of here. Hey, I'm a professional now, right? You listen to me now? Oh, you like the pompadour hair. Oh, because it makes me actually look like I'm a YouTube guitar... Okay, when you look at the guitar neck, damn, 14 minutes in, I gotta stop this rambling shit. Uh, how to quickly memorize, how to quickly memorize a fretboard starting with the E and A string notes in. Oh, damn it, that's my video. Shit. 
my video is about octaves and the E and the A string. And the whole gist of my video is, you know, pretty much everyone knows the E and the A. Those are the first two strings you memorize. Well, if you have those memorized, you have the D and the G string too, because you just need to know your octave. So, you know, damn it, damn it. Oh, man. You know, I'm not even going to watch it because I'm... There, besides 12th, we're looking down from the 12th because 12th is where everything repeats. Three frets, you know, fifth, yeah, fifth, yeah, all right, fifth, damn, where is that? Shit. I'm sorry, yeah, okay, sorry, yeah, there's three, we're counting the nut, we're calling this zero, okay, or one, this, this would be one, but the first fret, not this, uh, let's call it zero, let's call it zero, because this is really one, and we're not looking at one, we're looking at zero, look at the nut, so look at zero, look at five, and look at ten, it's easy, right, zero, five, ten, can't be easier, can't be any easier than that, at fret zero, five and ten we have natural notes going all the way down e a d g b e on the fifth fret we have a d g c e a on the tenth fret we have it is d g c yeah f Sorry, F, B, and uh, what's it be? E, E. Is it E? That's not E. No, it's not E. Sorry. On the 10th fret, we have uh, D, yeah, D, G, C, F, A, D. D, G, C, F, A, D, right? D, G, F A D yeah D G C F A D uh, on the fifth fret A D G C E A and on the nut E A D G B E so if you remember the zero the nut the fifth and the tenth those are three spots where you're gonna have all natural notes no sharps or flats on the circuit it's zero five and ten E A D G B E uh, A, D, G, uh, C, E, A. And a good way to know the fifth fret is, you know, like when you're tuning your guitar, th this is the, uh, the fourth here. So this is this string, A. And this is the next string, D. Here, D, this is G. And on the G, we got to drop down to make the B, so that makes C, because B string's gotta be a little biatch, get, get us all screwed up, and then this is back to E, right? So, I'm sorry, A, this is back to A. So, if you couldn't just memorize those three, that's gonna give you a good position for when you play violin or viola, you have what's called like first position, second position, third position. I'm sure they have them in guitar too, classical. So the way I'm looking at it is first position, if you can learn this pattern, which we're going to use the open, but then jump to the F and then not use the open after that. So open E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So that's from the first nut position. Um, so there's two ways to do this, this this one. You can choose. I originally went one, three, four, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, 
F, G, A, B, C, which is better actually because then you can see the pattern that I'm talking about. You, they, they come in groups. This A, B, C, one, three, four, one, three, four. So from the 10th fret, we got D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. What we're really doing here is we're memorizing the C major scale along the fretboard. Um, by, by memorizing the C major scale, you know where the natural notes are, and then you can kind of just derive the flats and sharps around them, which is easy enough. So when we look at, here, I'll draw it like we're looking at the guitar, like you're holding it. So this is E string. Can you see that? E string, A string, G string, G string, B string, I said G string, uh -huh. E string. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just bump us up to the uh, eighth fret. So let's call this seventh here. This is a fifth. That's the third. Yeah. So call this eighth fret. This is eighth fret. Um on I'm sorry, no, this is eighth fret. <laughs> That's seventh. Sorry. Eighth fret here. So look at the eighth fret. Ninth fret, tenth fret, and the tenth fret is where we have our. Uh, what is it? No, that's gonna be that under uh, D, better D, G, C. notes on this 10th fret, right? And this is our 5th fret, right? And our 5th fret, we got our A, D, G, C, E, A, right? And then let's call this the note down here, E, A, D, G, B, E. Anyhow, um, so if we look at the Eighth fret, we got our C. This is probably you know, going to be um, upside down for a lot of people, maybe. Um, C, D, well, E. This is F. So we get this pattern of one, three, five, one, three, five. When you see one, three, five, one, three, five, but there's an F here, that means one, three, five is going to end and it's going to turn into two, three, five. And then we get our B, C, D. And the two, three, five come in pairs, they come in twos. Two, three, five, D, and we have another two, three, five. After you see a 235, 235, you are then going to see a 245, but because this is a B string, it gets pushed forward. So imagine this was here. So it's a 2, 4, and then you have the C here on the 13th fret. And you're going to have another 2, 4, 5. Get D, E, F. So this pattern of one, 
three or one, two, five, one, two, five is in a pair. And it'll always be followed by a one, four, five, one, four, five in a pair. And this one, three, five, one, three, five can be up to three. There could be up to three. Um, but you'll know it changes if the F is in that line. If there's no F here, then it would just be one, three, five again. But it's no more than three, because in this third line, there would be an F. So one, three, five, one, three, five. If there's an F, switch to the two, three, five, two, three, five as a pair, which will then go down to the two, four, five, two, four, five, because this is a B string. It got shifted forward. But when you look at the guitar neck, you will see that pattern all over it, all over it. It's going to be a sequence. You'll see one, three, five, one, three, five. Sometimes you'll see another, well, I'll put the one, three, five up here, followed by uh, two, three, five, two, three, five. And then it'll jump to two, four, five, two, four, five. So does that make sense? So even if it's like in the middle of the string, you see a one, three, five here, but there's an F, say this is an F here. Uh, the next here is going to be a two, three, five, and it's going to be in pairs, two, three, five. If this is the B string, remember, everything just gets shifted forward, but that will be in a pair. After two, three, five, you're going to see two, four, five, two, four, five in a pair, or the guitar you know, neck ends, um, but it always follows that pattern. One through five, one through five, two through five, two through five, two over five, two over five. The only outlier that's weird is the one through five, you could have three rows of them, up to them, or maybe just one row. If there's an F in this one through five, it goes to two, three, five. So, you know, it's all sloppy. Let me, let me try to make more sense of this. One through five goes to two, three, five, when there's an F in this line. And two, three, five will always be in a pair. And I'll be followed by two, four, five. Two, four, five. Repeating. After two, four, five, actually, I think it actually jumps back up to one, three, five. You're going to see that pattern all along the fretboard. So if you could just remember that one, three, five, one, three, five, it's followed by two, three, five, two, three, five in a pair. Two, four, five, two, four, five in a pair. You'll, you'll find that. And it'll, it'll be kind of staggered because of the B string throws everything around. But just remember, if there's an F here, if you have a fret and there's an F, so we're looking at, you know, this is the nut, this is the 12th fret up here. If there's an F here, there's always a B there. Remember that. If there's an F there, there's always a B there. Unless it's the G string, and then um, it will actually be a C here, but because everything gets pushed forward. But yeah, if you see an F in a fret, you go down one, over one, and that's going to be a B. And that leads us all back to the octaves. When you look at our octaves, um, damn, it's all upside down and messy. Look at D, A, D, G, B, E. So um, let's say this is the nut here and talk frets over here. Um, your E string. E string octave is there on the D. So if you know this note, your root on the E, you should know this note too. And know that this is a seventh, that's your seventh of this root, and this is a flat seventh, definitely below. So your A, let's call this, uh, let's just call it a G. I'm gonna call that G. 
Um, so this would be, anyone know, anyone know? Bueller, Bueller, C, right, C. So your A string octave is the G string, two up. That's gonna be C. So if you know your root on your A, you should know the note down here, just right there. So you should also know the note here, it's gonna be your flat seventh. So this is your octave, that's your seventh, flat seventh. If that doesn't make sense to you, you need to know your major scale. So this is C, this is easy. This is a C major scale, it's all natural notes. So our seventh is B, our flat seventh, B flat here. So it's gonna be B flat under here. This is G and our seventh of G is anyone? Anyone know? It's the only sharp in there, right? Right, F sharp. And then the flat seventh is actually F of G. So if you know your octave, you have another E and A string notes, you know the D and the G string notes just by the octaves. And then another way of looking at this, if you know this octave from the D to the B, remember the B, B string pushes everything forward. So this, these octaves get screwy. This is a bigger jump. This is one fret in between. This is gonna be two frets in between. D to the, I'm sorry, wait, no. D and G octaves the same. So it's from D, oh, no, sorry, D to the B, yeah. D to the B octave is gonna be two frets away. And you're gonna have your octave here from the D to the B string. And then from the G string, C, same thing. B kind of screws everything up. Your, your octave C is gonna be here, two frets away. So this is our third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, six, seven, eight. So also another trick. If you know your major scale pattern, one, three, or one, sorry, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, which brings us back to our root octave, one octave up, it's the same pattern, two, four, one, two, four, or the B string, so it's gonna be here. One, three, four, back to our octave. And you can do the same thing from here. So you can just do the same major scale pattern. Two, four, one, two, four, but you have to run out of strings. So whatever you want, do on this, say you're playing your minor pentatonic uh, box. One, four, uh one three one three from here you can go one four one three one three and just you know do that same pattern off of this octave do it off of here so just knowing like just two lines of a pattern is actually pretty huge three lines even better but if you know a pattern off your root just jump up an octave and do the same pattern but just mind the b string how it pushes everything forward so this kind of ties everything together, knowing your octaves. And knowing your octaves also entails knowing your your, your major scale. Um, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, which is a uh, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. If you don't know what that means, look that up or figure it out on the guitar. So you know your octaves, then you know the notes of everything. This string is the same as this string. E, whatever it's up here is also down here, it's G. You know your A string, so you know your A. Since you know your E string, now you know the D string, because you know their octaves. And if you know your A string, you know the G string, because you know the octaves. Oh, this brings us back to that wily damn B string. Yeah, this is the outlier right here. This is really the string that just screws everything up. B, 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 B just a, Pain in the ass. But if you look at it like this, your octave from the D string is the G string. It's one, two, I believe. It's a one, two, 
two frets back. When you go two frets back from whatever notes up here, see, let's call this the D. So this is, we'll call this the root, F sharp. That's a D. Right there. So it's the third fret, right? B, C, D. So if you know your A string, just remember two frets back down in the B string is another octave right there. It's just like your, your C shape chord. You know, when you look at uh, root, this is one, two, three. E, B, G, D, A, E, uh, E, A, D, G, B, E, right? Your, your C chord, you got your C. What's that? Anyone? Anyone? Whatever. Um, no, D sharp, it's E. So you got your E, so that's the octave. So you got your C, your E. Where is your other C? Oh, in the B string right there. So remember, on your A, two frets back, down in the B. This is how you figure out the B string, by knowing the A string. So it's a backwards octave. So you have This is your other C octave on the D string. This would be three, four, fifth fret. And this C is the same as this C, the first fret on the B. So here you have your C shape, right? And this is your octave here, but this is also based off of your A shape, right? Caged here, anyone, anyone caged, right? Right, right? You know, so your C shape is connected to your, your A shape based off of your root. So when you look at your root on the A string, you basically have two choices of what you want to play. You can play a C like this, or you play a C like that, using that root. So now in the cage system, how the C and the A shape are connected. Okay? That's my video. That's the fret. I'm going to edit this down and really, really condense this because I, I rambled and way too much but i hope this made sense to some people or helped someone out i will try to make a neater version of this video and upload it uh i was just kind of like looking at it today and trying to wrap my head around it and i didn't really see any video that really talked about it in in this way and and the patterns off of the the knot the fifth and the tenth fret and how it's always one through five one through five two through five two two through five two through five two through five um, and just knowing your octave just to relate all the other, other strings. I'm sure that other video I saw was doing that, but probably not as good as I did. But Ricky Comiskey, yeah. Battle ends and down goes Father Charles. Somewhere in there. Yeah, um, yeah. check out Ricky Comiskey's video. How's my hair look? Still YouTube appropriate?